it seems like the data center fabric is taking some of its cues from the application world itself in terms of automation. We hear the term net ops or net DevOps and often hear it uh, in a way for networks to mimic some of the capabilities that DevOps have, has already implemented, but doing so for the networking world. PJ, not to put you on the spot here, but is there an easy way to define NetOps? How far along is the industry uh, progressed in implementing it? And can you provide yeah. a couple of examples of uh, NetOps in action? Sure. Uh, I, 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 when I was thinking about this, I, I really like a, a, you know, a quip that one of my colleagues has it's, it, where he says, uh, He's writing a letter to uh, one of his his mates, and he says, "You know, I, I would have written you a really short note, except it would have taken me too long." <laughs> <laughs> I love but uh, yeah, I, I I came up with a a, a a definition for us where I I think NetOps is 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 where its owner thinks of the network as a, a software driven entity that functions automatically in line with its operator's intent. Hmm. Like there's, uh, that's, that's imbued with an awful lot of connotation and, and implication, um, you know, ranging from designer's mind to operator's need in the moment uh, across that continuum of workflow. But that's, that's the way that, that we've thought of it, you know, the, the inherent combination of uh, automation with intent um, holistically across mm -hmm. the supported uh, platform, um, which means that, you know, it, 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 the NetOps terms and practices can apply at day zero all the way through day two. Um, and, I, you know, you were saying, how far along are we? I, you know, I think from a, a researching and, a, and an implementation point of view, we're, you know, we're, we're fairly far along. So, you know, I would say 50, 60% somewhere in, you know, maybe a little bit more, you know, from a, an, an existence proof point of view, as far as data models and, and encoding methods and, and uh, uh, API operations um, across the stacks, um, you know, we can do auto provisioning at some scale. We, we can do uh, fairly flexible analytics um, uh, with streaming telemetry. Um, in various ways. So I, you know, I think, I think from an engineering and an implementation point of view, we're, I would say we're, you know, 50, 50 plus percent of the way toward, uh, toward a NetOps vision and goal. And, um, but, you know, from an adoption point of view, I'd say we're, we're, we're a lot less you know, from a CSP perspective, right? You know, if we leave web scalers aside for a moment and just say, okay, they're, you know, they're moving along at their own pace. Um, from the broader CSP market perspective, I would say we're more down more in the around, around 15, 20 percent, um, maybe you know somewhere in that ballpark for you know for portions of the model that that can be. And I'm not talking about lab lab trials and and uh, proof of concept evaluations. I'm, I'm focusing on the reality of what gets used uh, on an ongoing basis day to day. Uh, across the service delivery footprint. Um, yeah, and you know, so various operators are gonna have, you know, differing degrees and differing areas where they're, they might be more ahead on, on one discipline. But that's kind of the broad picture that, that I see. In terms of examples, uh, you know, real good examples of where, where, the, where the model is producing results. Um, a couple that, that uh, we see pretty regularly our uh, kind of dynamic alignment of workload VNF operations, for example, with with forwarding domain requirements. Uh, you know this, this kind of unification of of overlay to underlay on on different techniques. Those those capabilities, I think, are are occurring in different service delivery categories, mobile um, uh, infra infrastructures, as well as as well as enterprise operations. Um, and then the other example that I think is interesting, it's, it, it's, it's kind of coming at it from a different perspective, but uh, there are many cases where there are, where there's self-configuration of, um, of VPNs for enterprises 
uh, in an operator's footprint um, that require a good amount of automation to be done. Now, what will that look like when there's a private 5G network that's included into the into the operation? What you know? How how would you adapt? Um, you know the actual um, vertical sector application to what the what is needed from the infrastructure. Those things will probably morph to incorporate some set of things that we're discussing here today um, with with the rest of the application delivery delivery structure. So there's those are some examples that, that we've seen and worked with um, a fair amount. Yeah, I think uh, to to add to that, PJ, I've always thought of. Uh... Of, of NetOps and uh, trying to draw analogies to DevOps, because uh, at least my assumption, I don't know this to be true, is that that's where it's borrowing the name from. And if we look at DevOps, I mean, there's a few fairly obvious fundamentals, you know, bridging or, or tearing down the walls between the development process and the operations process, getting developers to actually take some accountability for the operational aspects of a solution, an application, a network function, whatever it may be. But really, one of the key philosophies around this is around iteration domains and how small or how large those iteration domains are. And of course, right. the, uh, the corresponding aspect to this is uh, the automation of that iteration. So, you know, if we think foundationally what is required to achieve something like NetOps, I like to think of things, and again, you called this out in your paper, around the microservices adoption of the network operating system is a, is a great example as a case of... Well, you know, we've often thought of operating systems as being these monoliths that are iterated as a whole, not as a set of, you know, microservices. And I think uh, you know, this is one of the fundamental principles to trying to achieve proper NetOps from a, a, a longer term uh, aspect. And certainly if you look at where CSPs are still spending dollars operationally, you know, the ops part of this, it's managing things like alarms, it's managing deviations of configuration, it's managing upgrades. You know, there's million dollar upgrade projects that are spun up every year. And these are done because it's a massive complex change, you know, jumping from some software that existed two years ago to some software that came hot off the press, you know, last month. Even if they're from the same code base, there's a huge amount of change in that jump. So one of the key DevOps philosophies is reducing those jumps, you know, going from a, a waterfall process to a CI CD process, things like that. Um, and I think where we can, we're gonna see those start to apply in in networking, you know, reducing those iteration boundaries and providing some uh, some automation for those uh, iteration boundaries. 